Okay. So, we basically... I put the router back inside, and the router is what powers the Starlink satellite dish. So, before I start this, the important thing, because you don't want to create additional electrical problems, unplug the router. Okay. <laughs> so, I've, I've done that. So, there's no power running into this so far. You can see this is the cable that Airstream basically ran, and we were using the full length of this cable to power up Starlink, because okay. these ends are proprietary. We're switching sides here because it was the sun was something special over there. This is the moment of truth. Mm -hmm. No going back. No going back. Oops. What? Stop. You're joking, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. He's just cutting it at the end here, which is where he's going to put the Ethernet connection. Correct. So what's going to happen now? is I'm gonna wire that as a CAT6. I'm gonna go ahead and this is a receptacle here. Okay. That'll get put into there. I have a separate end over here for the working cable that will get cut. And then that cable will get fed into here. And then all I have to do is just plug it in like that. And the idea is that when we travel, you know, we break down, set up, we are unplugging the Starlink from that that end that is that gonna hole. be created there. Yep. Yep. Okay. So this is gonna be a startup to what I was doing yesterday. Because one of the things that was kind of bothering me while I was asleep was the way that the ground cable which was the silver one that was not part of the stranded pairs, was dealt with. Like in most of the videos... Where is it? Yeah. This is the grounding wire. And in most of the things I've seen online, everybody just cuts it and snips it. And that's a problem because, you know, like while grounding wires are typically if there's a lightning strike, they're also really important because they help to dissipate static electricity that might actually build up the longer it's on. And so in, in Starlink's... Uh, wires they built the ground in with the Ethernet because it's power over Ethernet so I'm actually I've come up with a way of being able to properly ground the wires and then I'll show exactly what I've done now keeping in mind that you know when you're cutting this you can see it in this piece of old cable here right like I this is a piece that I've cut from there what I would do if I was actually redoing this now in fact, that's what I'm about to do, is you see how much of the rubber here I've removed in terms of the, um, uh, the, the, the cabling. In the end, I want this much because I, I want this much grounding wire so that way I have a little bit of flexibility because it's not going to go into Ethernet port even though the cable is going to probably be cut to about this length. I'll still have this much extra sheath. So... Additionally, you know, someone had made a good point because it's a shielded cable to go ahead and use these shielded um, RJ45s. The issue is that the shielded RJ45s do not actually work with this adapter, which I was thinking about because it's metal, it is actually probably um, shielded anyways. So I'm just going to use a standard. This kit that I got came with some standard ones um, that I'm going to uh, use this time around right here just the standard clear ones because this metal would provide the shielding anyways okay so these instead of these i have metal correct i okay. used i used these on the other end which is fine like it's just i don't what other end? i'm sorry on the receive i use these on you the, used i use these. these on the receiving end that's in the airstream and that connector okay okay but we're talking now for the starlink and the actual the dishy uh, portion the dish mm -hmm. you're going to use correct this. because otherwise it won't work properly it won't fit properly with this got it. the shielded ones are a little bit too thick for this that's why this is sticking out it shouldn't stick out got it got it it should not stick out okay we're starting over we just wanted to show you guys how ed you know threaded these through 
one at a time. That's why they're so long, so that he can thread them to, through individually. And now he'll cut and snip and do that part. Now notice, I have the um, grounding wire outside here. Now, this will feed through here. So before I start to screw this on here, I just want to protect this portion of the grounding wire because there's be a little bit of friction here. So I've put a little bit of electrical tape there to shield it a little bit. And then from there, I'm screwing this on because this is going to be a tension grip. Right, and now, good okay. so in order to be able because remember this is going to be coming out all the time okay? so this is being plugged this is going to be plugged into the airstream into the airstream end okay. but i still need to ground which i will show you when i do it over there where i'm going to ground into but the idea is is that this grounding cable right here this grounding screw which conducts electricity will be screwed into the side of the airstream i'm going to wrap the joining the um the cable on the airstream side into here and when I'm plugging it in, I will just slide this over this with a wing nut. Okay, so Ed grabbed a longer piece of this grounding wire. From the, from the old cord. Yeah, from the old cord. Just to be able to kind of like... Loop make it, it around. Strong, make, loop it around, make it a strong hold, a strong, a strong uh, attachment to not have problems in the future. Make sure that this still easily goes on, which it does. There's enough room because you want this wire. The key is that this wire and this piece of metal touches the grounding. Okay. What I want to see is going to get this through there. So what I've done is I've taken the one that I had here and I've went ahead and twisted it around. To, around yeah, uh, the this one, one was there before. Correct. I'm just making sure that this is all nice and tight. What's nice about that too is that it's also going to be nice and strong there. And now, I'll measure an appropriate amount of this cable, which I want to go a little bit past here. So for ease, Ed took this um, black shrinking mm -hmm. of, uh, cover, he cut it about five-eighths of the way up, just to make it easier to get the grounding wire in. Okay guys, so just to be clear, he used black shrinking uh, cable sheath cover mm -hmm. um, to, to cover the, the grounding wire, and he used a blow dryer to shrink that, you know, to tighten it. And then to be extra safe, he used uh, black electric tape to wrap, around, to wrap it around here, just to kind of like get it nice and uh, protected, and then he used the electrical tape here as well. So this is the final product. All right, this is the ethernet receptacle jack, which is what we've made the hole for. But you see we have to um, put uh, screws in here, so now we have to add those holes as well. The diameter of these screws that came with this are just too short. To fit through the actual metal piece, that black metal piece of the Airstream? Correct. Okay, so what was the solution? I just removed this, the, oh, okay. the, the, the cap The rubber here. cap. Yeah. You removed the rubber cap in order to make it work. Okay. It's not a big deal. All right. All right, so <clears throat> the 
shout the uh, grounding wire from the inside the airstream I had already put the little plastic piece on. So this is now instant and secured. I'm plugging this in here. Nice and firm there. So this is you, gonna get wrapped around okay, the grounding you, screw. You've run that uh, grounding cable from this side through this other hole that Ed's hand is blocking to this side. Okay, and what are you gonna do with this grounding wire? So right now I'm gonna go and get, I wanna go get the other cable because I wanna see how much play I have with them together. Okay. So let me go get them. Okay, so what I decided to do rather than drill a hole for the screw, because I was like, you know what, my hands are so big, getting in there and it's always gonna be a pain. So I just took the grounding wire, the little bit the extra was there, I just sealed From it with the electric tape. Yes, yep. that, that was unshielded. Okay. So I shielded that with some electrical tape and I wrapped, that's the grounding wire from the router. I've went ahead and wrapped it around there really nice and okay, tight. Okay, on this screw, okay. Correct. So then when I come to hook up, all I need to do is just put these two here together like this. Because this is the cable with the grounding wire from, from the, the Starlink dishy. dish. Okay. And then I can just use this um, wing nut because that's easier for me to use than a regular nut. And I don't have to worry about wear and tear here because of the way that this all is. That's nice and grounded. And voila. Connect. Nice. Okay. And now look over there. It should be. There you go. It worked. So then when we travel, like tomorrow, we're going to travel. Mm -hmm. What do you need to do? You just, what do you unhooking here what are you disconnecting all i have to do is just press that button pull this out hold on uh, well first i would unscrew that right and then take that out take that out. that's it okay and store it and then when we park in the next spot you just reconnect everything yep we're not worried about anything getting damaged nope awesome cool well done let me cover your face here it's so hot well done honey and again cool Awesome. Congrats. Thanks.